Hey guys, it's Fallout Myth. On this episode, we're gonna go step by step on how to pay for the best weapons and armor in the game. This can be done with any build or playstyle. We will be needing 4 perks to make this a walk in the park. The first one being Aqua Girl. We're gonna be doing a lot of swimming so this will come in handy to avoid rat damage. Next is Lone Wanderer. We take 15% less damage and 50 plus carry weight when you venture without a companion. Dog meat doesn't count as a companion so you can bring him along for his extra carry weight. Next is Caps Collector. It'll give us 10% buying and selling discount. We will be pairing this up with two Junktown Jerky Vendor magazines for 6% buying discounts plus Grape Mentets for 10% more discount and using our Charisma gear. Lastly, we take the Chemist perk. This allows us to craft Poison Cult Traps. They sell really, really well, so I suggest you craft as many as possible. Any remaining perks are completely up to you and your playstyle and build. Now with that out of the way, we're gonna do a short recap on the last couple of episodes. Check them out on the description below. We scrapped all the wood and metal of Sanctuary, giving us around a thousand steel and two thousand wood. We use these to cheese some levels. If you guys truly want to abuse this, you can get around ten more levels. The first place you'd want to go to is Sanctuary. On the back of this house, you're going to find a root cellar. In it, there is a ton of good loot. You got pre-war food, pre-war money, and most importantly, you're going to find three gold bars. These are going to sell really well, so we're going to save them up for later. Make sure you're looting all the cabinets and drawers and places around Sanctuary. If you have good RNG, you're going to find some high valuable stuff as well. Next, we're going to Robotics Disposal and you will find a magazine, three fusion cores after you self-destruct the uh, sentry bot. Across from Sanctuary, you're also going to find the Circuit Breaker, with, uh, which is going to release three cap stashes, and there's some more loot on that area as well. Next place we went to is Red Rocket. You're going to find cigarettes, pre-war money, and some valuables. After, we went to the Mole Rat Den. In here, you're going to find a fusion core, these charisma glasses and this skeleton, some high value items. So make sure you get as much as you can carry. Back at Red Rocket, we want to drop off our loot and make space for carry weight. And this is a glitch I wanted to show you guys quick. You scrap and you store a few milliseconds apart and it duplicates the item so you end up getting the materials but still keeping the item it's another way of getting materials like steel to make cold traps now with all the metal and steel that we've gathered we're gonna craft as many poison cold traps i ended up getting about 172 but i wasn't thorough scrapping red rockets so this is good enough make sure you put everything back in your box and now we are ready to go to avernati farm i got my gear i got some basic eight items food and purified water we're gonna head off to the water tower there is a first aid kit with some purified water and on the far end you're gonna see two bot flies near the trees. These are kind of optional to kill. You can always just skip them by sticking to the left side. And while you do go to the left side, there is a trunk with some loot and some caps. So heading off to Avernati Farm, avoid the north side because there's some random encounters on that side. Make sure you gather all the melons because you can sell them um, if you pick them up for Lucy and she gives, uh, gives you 27 caps. Head over to the trailer up north. We need to gather some hop flowers to craft the um, grape mentats later on. 
get in it there's some valuable loot in here as well and a bet if you want to save it's a good time to save so you don't have to repeat if anything happens all right now we're heading off to wicked shipping yard what you want to do is sneak when you enter because there's a ghoul hiding under the truck something that i like to do here is utilize dog meat to aggro and tank these guys you have freedom to aim and kill them with no problem so make sure you use dog meat he is a good meat shield head over to this side and we are going to grab the wicked shipping keys these keys are gonna open up the trailer on a few locations across the commonwealth make sure you keep looting this location there's a ton of aluminum cans tin cans some ammo oil cigarette cartons anything right now don't be too picky about what you get so this is what i just said uh opening up a trailer bed with the keys that we just picked up so make sure you get that there is a protectron here that you can utilize to your advantage if you don't want to deal with the ghouls on your own these guys will patrol the area and will help you kill the ghouls heading over to the other side on this trailer you're gonna always see a settler with about 50 caps and a safe and we get there we go we even got some more pre-war money and there is a couple more places here there is one ghoul I should have sent dog meat to take this guy because uh, he can give you a hard time get everything you can get your hands on there's a hollow tape some oil and right before we leave we're gonna backtrack to this place we're gonna go up the second floor towards the roof and heading back in there is an ammo box and a couple more tin cans and oil and going back to the roof if you jump over you're gonna see a skeleton with a duffel bag full of pre-war money this stuff is gold it sells really well so do not miss a chance to loot this stuff now we're done with wicked shipping there is an abandoned shack here with a couple of uh, bot flies that i was missing but there yeah there they are um as always dog meat is there for you makes this a whole lot easier and i know it's a it's a pain if you're not using bats to to kill these guys but there we go and in here you're gonna find a bed and a ton of cigarettes empty bottles and most importantly a whiskey we're gonna be using the whiskey hop flowers and mentats to craft grape mentats that's gonna as i said earlier it's gonna give us a 10 percent um buying discount then we keep heading off west towards the road just follow the road once you see this body of water you want to hug the shore keep going this way on the other side there are some mongrels so that's why i'm sticking to the shoreline in here sometimes you have these uh, raiders sitting on the bridge and um, the, if there are raiders just make sure you jump in the water and avoid them now we're in sunshine tidings there is a bunch of ghouls and roaches here you before you do anything else just go cabin by cabin and kill these guys so that you can clean the workshop and a little tip here before you open any door just um, pick through the windows and get these guys just makes this a whole lot easier and there is dog meat holding it down for us 
check the drawers here we have a settler and a survival guide this is gonna give us extra meat for every wild animal we kill get in the the trunk the cash taps and keep going cabin to cabin there is some really good stuff like right there i got the sea captain's hat this is like one of the best head pieces in the game early in the game it gives me two endurance i'm gonna show you guys a guaranteed location where you can get this if you aren't as lucky as me and and get it just randomly that's the beauty of checking everything and being thorough you always have a chance of getting really really good stuff and lastly we're gonna head over to this outhouse for some bobby pins behind this cafeteria building there is a bed and a cooler there's a couple of ghouls inside so if you have dog meat send him in he's gonna be our sacrifice he's gonna take all the damage while we stay back and kill these guys you can always just throw um, a grenade i would avoid uh, using molotovs because they're so um you're always gonna end up killing yourself so just don't once you clean the workshop you're gonna pop in a bed save your progress because you don't want to do any of this again and i am going to get scrapper it uh, gives me a little extra whenever I scrap any items. And even though I don't have a um, weapons workbench, I can always just use the uh, workshop to do it. Here, I scrapped some metal, so I'm going to craft some more cold chops. And I'm going to take these with me. Just make sure that if you're dumping junk in this location that you're not dumping the pre-war money or the coal traps and we're done here once you reach the bridge you're gonna make a right and just go straight don't venture down there's some mire lurks down there too so just avoid it keep going this way you're gonna see this um dilapidated building going up this tree you're gonna see a cap stash on the roof. Once we drop down, there are about three booby traps here, so be very careful. And we're gonna grab our second whiskey. I should have put dog meat outside because he can always set off one of these traps and kill you in the process, so don't do what I'm doing right now and just put him outside. There's another cash cap stash. Make sure you get these registers, you always, almost always find pre-war money. That door is locked, but we are going to make our way down the Walden Pond, and there is a hidden sewer entrance that we're gonna get to. Heading to the Walden Pond, just be mindful of where you go here, and there is a raider shack just across from it. Keep going into the sewer, make a left here, there is a chem cooler. And just be very careful here with dog meat and yourself, make sure you sneak. Throwing a grenade or a molotov if you feel risky. And in this location you are going to find our first um, Junktown Jerky vendor magazine that's gonna give us a discount a vendor discount there is some really good loot in this location up ahead there is a little uh, hallway that's going to lead us to a couple of raiders again use dog me to your advantage send him in to tank and get all the aggro from these guys while you sit back and shoot them or you can always use a well-timed Molotov or grenade here and kill these guys in one go. These aren't very hard and especially with dog meat, it just makes this whole thing a lot easier. The reason we want to clear this is because there's another whiskey here and some really 
valuable loot. There's our whiskey. And if you looted Walter's corpse, you should have gotten uh, his key to open up this safe. Otherwise, it requires master lock picking. Get Big Jim, this legendary melee weapon, and some more chems, tin cans, and a lot of goodies in here. Now we can head out the door, looting more cans for our cold traps. That steel, get that steel, get as much as you can. And again, for me, it always gets foggy. I don't know what it is with this character that it's it's foggy like every other day and it makes it hard for, for me to show you guys. But anyway, heading back to the pipe, up ahead you're gonna see a random encounter location. For me is the Jules and Fred encounter, but I'm not gonna bother. You can do some speech checks around this. So keep hugging the, the shore, keep going a little bit east of wall pond you're gonna see this vendor he's got a bunch of cats here um, this is a good chance to drop off some junk non-valuable junk this guy does sell cat meat which is crazy he's uh breeding all these cats and um, actually eating cats so it's pretty messed up if you think about it anyway go back down to the pond and keep heading east don't venture out north because you're gonna see a raider shack with some mongrels so we're just gonna keep heading straight and on the south side you're gonna see gunners high level gunners so just make sure you keep apart from both north and south right there's the shack a good point of reference is this yellow car here if you're between the yellow car and the red truck you're safe keep heading east and again it's so foggy but you're gonna see a military installation it's a unmarked location and you're gonna head off south it's optional there is a bed and an explosives box but it's it's very easy to see and i actually because it's so foggy i went off too far and aggro this blood box but again i'm gonna show you guys here in a minute where this installation is so you guys don't make the same mistake that i did again it's optional it's just a little extra it has a uh, one of these beds that you can get more than eight hours five hours of sleep and some explosives and and some junk so if you feel risky come we're heading back to the Drumlin Diner and here what we want to do is pass the speech check to lower his gun and we're gonna try to convince these guys to settle things without violence. We're gonna end this conflict pe peacefully just so that afterwards we have two vendors that we can take advantage of because in the northwest area of sanctuary there's not a whole lot of vendors so the more vendors you have the better and easier it is to make caps so he's got a whole bunch of drugs and camps but we're not interested in buying again check for trudy i think sometimes she sells whiskey so let's see if she has there. She has another whiskey, so get that for yourself. Get rid of any junk. We are gonna head off uh, just a little bit southwest. You're gonna see a truck with some cigarettes on the trailer, and there is always a Nuka Quantum in here. Now we're heading off to Starlight Drive-In. There are some mole rats here, but again, you have dog meat, so this should not be a big deal. Be mindful that there is a cat mine. Sometimes is by the diner area or by the workshop uh, shed. So just be mindful and spam the vat button just to see where it's at so you don't get caught up in the explosion. Here, I should have uh, actually just put down a bed and um, 
and save i don't run run the risk of uh getting exploded by one of those random cap mines and we're gonna keep exploring the back side there is a locked door here and some tin cans oil and a guaranteed fusion core and a nuka quantum there's a safe an expert safe here so if you have the perks for it and you can open it by all means there is a uh oh there is the cap mine uh this is what i said earlier and i almost got shredded by it there we go we're gonna clean the workshop and we're going to clear the dining area what you want to do is go over the second floor down to the first and deactivate this booby trap and loot the cans and now that we've cleared everything we're gonna scrap some metal we're gonna save the metal because this settlement doesn't have a chem station going up this way you're gonna see a back storage key to open the back area which we've already cleared put down a bet save because i don't want to do any of this again now we are going to get a power armor and get ourselves two more junk town jerky vendor magazines for extra discounts with vendors so let's go we're gonna head down this way towards the train up this uh, trailer bed and there is one mongrel here you can use dog meat if you have him or just ignore him there's a really funny location here with this skeleton and a and a bat top there it is if you guys are into um into this stuff finding these little uh nonsense in the game is always fun anyway heading back down to this riverbed you're gonna see a vertebra crash right there on the map this one always has a fusion core this is optional it's um the super duper mark can be a pain to to clear so having power armor and dog meat is a big help our first stop is going to be mystic pines to get ourselves the junk town jerky vendor so this should be our your second magazine there are some other stuff here but it requires advanced lock picking one of those lock doors gives us access to a fusion core so if you have the lock picking skills by all means get that for yourself we're gonna head straight towards super duper mart be mindful that south you're gonna see all these houses there is a raider, raider outpost on that area so we are going to skip that and keep going west we're gonna make a quick stop here to this um bank we're gonna make a left loot the cash registers for pre-war money and caps get in the console open the door and you're gonna see a corpse with a couple of pre-war monies jump down and you're gonna see a duffel bag with some more pre-war money i've collected over a hundred right now let's see yeah it's over almost 120 that's pretty good head over to uh, this side be very careful because there are a couple there is a raider with a mini nuke so you don't want to go out in the open and here is some mr handy oil very valuable so make sure you get that now into the super duper mart there are a couple of ghouls here um i should send dog meat to take all the the damage but if you jump into the shelves you're gonna see some nuka cola two nuka cola quantums then there they are these are pretty easy to to kill especially having your power armor there we go one well-placed grenade and they're done 
and loot these shelves there's a lot of pre-war food very uh and it's gonna sell well later on heading out down to this um office you are going to see a console and that's gonna open up a safe and we can also use it to activate the protectron that's gonna help us kill the the ghouls make sure you are looting all these uh, cash registers and keep heading this way you're gonna go into a cafeteria area with a sleeping ghoul get some sneak damage in there and as you get closer there's gonna be another web another one popping down this way and again just um you can always just send dog meat to uh take all the all the aggro i got a gold watch that's pretty nice make sure you're always looting the corpses there's a med kit with some valuable uh, first aid items. And here is our third magazine. Now you can call it here. This is a little bit extra that I'm showing you guys. It's pretty doable even at a low level. Even if you're a beginner on survival, just because you have the Protectron and you have dog meat around and you have a power armor. It's pretty doable for beginners. Head over this door. There's two ghouls popping out the windows. So be ready for them. Here is where it's going to get a little more challenging. Going to the back side of the store. You're going to pop this guy on the right side and immediately you're going to drop, drop either a molotov or a grenade and head back down. You're going to have dog meat and the protectron around. There's going to be a bunch of ghouls coming at you at the same time, so be ready. There's dog meat in position and the protectron is right on that side. And as these guys are spawning... There's three or two ghouls that spawn on the back to the uh, the entrance of the market. So make sure you turn around. Don't let them flank you from the back. Get them before they catch you. And there it is. We're going to heal dog meat for a job well done. On this way, you're going to find a wooden crate, the corpse of a minute man with a holotape and a steamer trunk. When you get close to the steamer trunk, you're going to have a random ghoul spawn behind you. So be ready for that. Keep heading back to the back side of the store. There is a ghoul here beside this fusion core. Make sure you sneak up on it. And this is what I meant, that um, it's better to clear the backside. Just because there's some really good stuff, some really valuable loot in here. And get these two guys. There's two guys here spawning from the windows. You can always just uh, send in dog meat, as I've said about 20 times already. Uh, just because it just makes this a lot easier. And if you go to the office area, you're going to see a funny teddy bear locked in a trash can. I thought I'd show you guys. It's pretty funny. Anyway, go back down to the Fusion Core room. We're going back down the stairs to the garage area. We're going to see another corpse of a minute man with a hollow tape. There are two ghouls here and as always dog meat being the good doggy he is he's gonna take all the aggro from these guys and that's it we've cleared super duper mart we're all done here we're gonna go to the back of the supermarket there is a shipping container with a crate and a uh, bed that you can't sleep on for some reason 
As we head back to Starlight Drive-In on this tower, you're gonna see a random item location. For me, I got a fridge, but sometimes what I've seen is uh, a variation like a, um, a dead Brahmin or an abandoned bar stand. If you have luck, you're gonna find a fridge. Organize your valuables. Put them in your valuables bin. And you see I got four whiskeys and 300 pre-war cash already. And all that steel I'm gonna save up for later when I head back to Red Rocket to gather all my valuables. We're gonna take all the steel we've gathered and we're heading back to Red Rocket to craft more coal chops. Before we do that, we're gonna go up this hill. You're gonna see two rat stacks and a safe with some ammo. Heading off near a random encounter, you're gonna see this shopping cart with a bunch of pre-war food right here on the map. Make a mental note for your playthrough. And this is the Concord random encounter. These uh, settler corpses are always here and they got a lot of loot. Here near Red Rocket, you're going to see a railroad outpost. This is where Deacon allegedly keeps taps on you. We're going to craft our grape mentat. So I ended up getting about four whiskeys. I got up to four grape mentats, but I recommend uh, three if you have the materials. There we go. Here, just take as much as you can. I'm not gonna take the fat man just because it's too much carry weight. If you're over cumbered here, use dog meat. And as I said earlier, he has 30 carry weight. Majority of the weight you're gonna carry are from the cold chops, but you can always just drop them and pick them up all the way to starlight driving. Be very careful how you turn your character. Any sudden turns and it's gonna make the cold drops fly off and it's a pain to get them back. Back at starlight drive-in, again, we're gonna gather our valuables and we're gonna hand pick our cold chops. Now we're heading off to the railroad tracks. Keep following them until you find this wicked shipping container. Open it up with your key for valuables and head back to the train tracks until you see a power armor. If you have advanced hacking perk, you can always get access to it, but we're not. So we're going to turn this way and avoid the mongrels up ahead back into this road, get the crates, and we are making our way to that destroyed, dilapidated house. Get the roach. What we wanna get from here is this Nuka Quantum. Jump in an angle, get it, and keep heading down the road. And our next destination is Jalbert's brother's disposal. I would suggest putting your cold traps in here, nice and safe. Now we're gonna go clear the mole rats in this place. Be mindful that um, you should be above ground level. I got too confident here thinking that I could, um, I could get them no problem, but I almost died. So don't do what I'm doing right now. Head to higher ground. That could be the uh, Nuka Cola fridge or the trailers. Anywhere where the mole rats aren't gonna get you. Now you might be wondering why we're stopping here. Well, there are a bunch of corpses of uh, children of Adam. And sometimes if you have good RNG, you're gonna find that they have nuke grenades. And these nuke grenades sell really well. And... There's also some goodies here, like the trunk. Here I'm checking all the corpses. There we go. I got myself our first nook grenade. 
there's another corpse nothing on this one nothing on this one either so we'll keep searching going up this way with some ammo for some ammo boxes and another corpse there is a cooking station and here there's my second nook grenade that's not bad at all heading into this trailer there's a couple of beds and a camp box you can actually sleep on this one but you gotta be on the very edge so that you're not taking rat damage now we're gonna take our cold chops head back this way this is optional there is a vertebrate wreckage with a power armor suit uh, if you want to get it i would advise you to get it um, and make your way and drop it off near hangman's alley and you're gonna save it for when you have to clear hangman's alley if you don't that's fine it's just extra measure to make things easier if you keep heading down this way, just keep to the road just because I almost died there with some randomly placed mines. There is another checkpoint down the bridge with a sleeping bag. So I'm sleeping. I don't want to do any of this again. I'm putting my cold chops away, heading over these rocks and there is a little house by the, by the river jump over it and we're gonna get the sea captain's hat this is gonna give us two endurance it's the best headpiece you can get in early level now if you don't have power armor you can just jump in the lake and swim but i'm gonna show you guys the land route just pass the bridge head over this way and hug the shoreline you're gonna keep jumping down and keep hugging the shore if uh, if you just go straight towards the um, the open land there is a mongrel and right now dealing with enemies while you're carrying the cold chops is a pain you definitely don't want to drop this head over the shoreline until you find this abandoned shack and from here you're gonna make a turn over the rocks not too close to the road because there is a random encounter to that side and for me it was a high level mr gutsy so that's a that's a no for me keep heading this way until you see a house in the distance there are some high value items here a bunch of nuka colas a settler corpse with 50 caps you're gonna drop off your cold chops gather the day tripper gather your nuka colas and then you're gonna head on this door under this shelf you're gonna see a bunch of pre-war cash and the second day tripper might as well get the plants too while we're here now we're ready to head towards vault 81 we want to stick to the side again because there's a random encounter near the road so we're gonna take the bushes up this rock once you see the dirt road you are safe get on the dirt road don't keep going on the rocky hills just because there's a bear up there too here i would encourage you to save put your cold traps away there is a nice bed down this way so get sleep get your cold drops back make sure you put them in your inventory before you get in otherwise they're gonna be gone get your charisma gear you only need 11 charisma to pass the red speech check otherwise you're gonna have to pay them I think for fusion cores if you don't pass the speech check get your cold drops head off onto the elevator Be very careful with the elevator. Once it starts moving, your call chops might end up going all over the place. There, doggy kicked my call chops. 
grab your cold chops and you're gonna put them away before we buy anything we're gonna collect a magazine since we're here might as well get this Heading down this hall, we're gonna go see a doctor and donate some blood. Since we're already high in charisma, we can pass his uh, speech checks and collect some EC 150 caps for some blood. Now we're ready to see the Vault 81 vendor. If you have dog meat and he has loot, don't forget to get his stuff too. Now with Alexis, we're gonna make sure we have Great Mentats, Day Tripper, and our Charisma gear. We're gonna buy the Destroyer Leg. This is a must have because it gives you 10% uh, speed. Although the left Overseer Arm Guard is more of a VATS build. It's up to you if you wanna get it. I got all of them for myself just because of the aesthetics. I really don't care much about the bonus but like I said the essential one being the leg guard here I actually didn't um, have all my charisma as high as I should have I didn't use a day tripper so I'm a little bit low but still it's very doable no problem here there we go now we can equip our new gear and we're ready to head down to Diamond City. I also got some 45 ammo, especially if you're gonna get the spray and pay from crickets. I'm gonna get some additional 45 ammo as well here. Sell your cold chops, your valuables, any extra cams you have. There we go, we're looking good now. We're almost there. Now we're heading down this dirt road. We're just gonna keep going straight because on our left side, there's a random encounter. Over here, you're gonna see Ashes. Might as well get this cat. He's gonna go back to Vault 81 for another quest. On this corpse, you're gonna see a Nuka Cola in a camera, some high quality junk. Head over this way, staying away from that random encounter area. Now, as I said earlier, if you dropped off your power suit anywhere here, now it's the time to get it because we're gonna clear Hangman's Alley. We're gonna go over this way. These guys drop Molotovs. They're a little bit tough to, to kill, but make sure you save beforehand. You can always send dog meat to tank these guys and get their aggro otherwise they're very easy to snipe except when they throw the molotovs they can still one shot you even with the gear that we have there we go that's the last one we're gonna claim our workshop and we're gonna also get this steamer trunk here and as we did with the other settlements we're gonna scrap the metal and we're gonna craft a couple more cold chops, poisoned cold chops. We're gonna take our steel, since we don't have a cam station, we're gonna craft them when we get to Diamond City. Now we're heading down to Diamond City. On the right side, you're gonna see a bunch of uh, super mutants. So it looks like some of them are still alive. Earlier, there was an encounter with some uh, Diamond City guards, but they didn't get them down. You can skip this. These guys can be a little bit tricky to kill. But if not, there's some good loot in here. Now keep going down the road towards Diamond City. Don't forget to check this side over here with an ammo box and some junk. Talk to Piper. Open up Diamond City. And while these guys are in uh, cinematic mode, you can take Kellogg's key. The Mayor McDonough is stuck in cinematic mode, so take advantage of it. Here we're gonna see Myrna. She's got a decent chess piece with agility and perception. If you wanna get that, it's optional for you. And Arturo has a very expensive double projectile fat man. He's got another legendary here, all faithful. Double damage if the target is at full health, so not bad. 
He's got some protector arm guard, but we already got the ones we we need. But depending on your builds, you might also be interested in those. Heading down to Becky's basement, she's got the champion, couple of champion uh, set pieces as well. Lastly, we're gonna go to this bar. We're gonna start this quest chain to get a bunch of camps, which you can use for currency as you might be running low on your poison coal chops. Once they step out, you can loot the bar. There's some pre-war food, antibiotics, waters, mugs, grab everything you can. Once you activate the quest, we're gonna kill these guys and we're gonna steal all the camps. On Nelson's corpse, he's got 820 caps, so make sure you loot all the corpses. You're gonna have to kill Henry and Paul, otherwise they're not um, you're not gonna be able to, to open up the crates. You get 60 camps each, so 60 jets, buff out, psycho, mentats. So you can use this as currency later on. We're going to keep heading off this road down this way and under this bridge there is a booby trap and a settler corpse. If you make a left here, there is a little unmarked location with some junk items. And because we've sold majority of our valuable junk, you can always fill up here as much as you can. Now we want to stick to the water just because on, there's a uh, pedestrian overpass with a super mutant that has a rocket launcher. So you want to avoid that. Once you pass that, head back in land and we're going to go into Charles View Amphitheater. There's some valuable gold watches and caps pre-war food, bobby pins, one mini nuke, dirty water. So fill up as much as you can carry, use dog meat and head back in the water. Jumping on this boat, there's an opened safe with some more junk and pre-war money. Keep heading down, swim under the bridge, head over to this boat and there is a bed. This is a good checkpoint. Keep checking the boats, there's always valuable stuff in it. Like here, some pre-war food, a suitcase with Medex. There is a glowing one here, but he can't swim. So just pass him through, going down this bridge. We're almost to Bunker Hill. Once you reach here, you're going to go back in land, open up this shelter. There's some pre-war food and random junk. There might be a random encounter on this bridge, so just be careful. If there is, you might as well just run, run towards Bunker Hill and not deal with it. Once you're in Bunker Hill, sometimes you'll come across Lucas. He's got some pretty good gear as well, so get your chem, your great mentat, stay tripper, charisma gear. He's got the champion left arm. He's got pretty good stats, strength and endurance. The Mantis left grieve and arm guard are super expensive, so I don't encourage you to get them. You're gonna need a lot of um, caps. What we wanna get here is the Black Ops chess piece. This is the best chess piece you can get for a long, long time. And the one I encourage you to get as well is the Destroyer left arm. This one reduces 15% damage when you're blocking or sprinting. And we also got the other one from Vault 81 for the right arm. So I would encourage you guys to get these two. And they're not as overly expensive as the other ones. There is one more piece that we're gonna get at Good Neighbor. I'm gonna show you guys the safest route to get. Here there is another bed on this boat. Make sure you safe and keep heading up the bridge down this road 
I'm going to show you guys the safest route to good neighbor. You're going to want to make a right here past this yellow car into this alleyway. Keep going straight all the way down. There are some raiders on that left side, so we'll stick to this pathway to avoid that. And here you're going to see two mongrels. You can outrun them or if you have dog meat, get him to to aggro them and snipe them from from afar. Here we go. There's a camp box with some explosives and just on the other side there are some gunners and super mutants so be careful get these corpses they got some caps and valuable stuff sometimes now we enter good neighbor we want to make sure we still have our charisma gear great mentats they tripper we're gonna visit cleo she's got 45 ammo and some overly expensive gear uh, this is too expensive for us right now unless you want to craft more cold drops the one we want to visit is Daisy. She's got our leg piece that's going to give us 10% speed movement. With the two pieces, we've got 20% movement in total. Like I said, on survival, you're going to be doing a lot of running. Now you're going to be 20% faster. Going into this hotel, might as well grab the live and love. This is going to give you 5% XP when traveling with a companion. And there it is, the best gear, the best weapons you can ever have at this point in game. Something I like to do is put a dash on my main gear so that it's always on top of the menu and I don't have to look through my inventory and waste time. Now you guys are pretty well set to go back and clear Lexington, Cambridge and majority of the game on the next episode i'm gonna show you guys how to get ballistic weave from the railroad so stick around and thanks for watching